let's start off with working with the x squared minus y squared. Okay, if x squared is first, you need to think, okay, that's going to face left and right because it's going to be dominant on the x-axis. Okay, I first need to get our, first we need to write the equation in standard form. Well, hyperbola is always equal to 1, so we need to divide by 64. So let's divide each of these by 64. And the first part is going to, the first expression is going to be x squared, and 4 goes into 64 16 times. 16 goes into 64 4 times. And 64 divided by itself is 1. So here's our equation, setting it equal to 1. Now, we need to decide which way it faces. The next thing you do is look at what is your dominant direction. Whichever is positive is your dominant direction. So x squared is first and it's positive. Whoops. And so it's going to face up and down the x-axis. Our center. So it's left and right. Okay, we need to find the center. Well, on this one, the center, there's no, no values added to x or y inside the squared term. So it's just 0, 0. So we're just starting with a nice, easy 0, 0 hyperbola. We need to find the vertices. So let's find A. Okay. A is equal to, or A squared is equal to 16, so A is 4. So I'm going to count left 4 and right 4. And those are going to be my two vertices. So I'll call that vertice 1, and I'll call that vertice 2. So vertice 1, vertice 2. And I'm facing left and right. Now, I need to find b. Well, b squared is very simple. It's also in the formula. It's 4. So that means b is 2. So I'm going to... So let's take a quick look at our equation. We have x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. So a squared is equal to 16 b squared is equal to 4. I'm going to count from the center up my conjugate axis, and that's my covertice 1. Down, that's my covertice 2. And those are the values of b. So <clears throat> I've got a and b figured out. Now I need to find c. Now c, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to take a squared plus b squared, and set it equal to c squared. So let's, let's take 16 plus 4, so that's 20, and that's c squared. So that means c is just equal to the square root of 20, which is 2 root 5. Now, as a decimal, it's approximately 4 and a half. So I'm just going to approximate that for my sketching. So I'm going to go back from the center. We know the foci is always on the same axis as the vertex. It's the major or the um, transverse axis. So from here, I'm going to go one, two, three, four and a half. One, two, three, four and a half. So there are my two foci. There's one and there's two. Okay, now how do I draw the asymptotes? That's when you're going to go back and you're going to draw a box, a rectangle, where that rectangle is going to include the covertices and the vertices. So I'm going to extend a box around to create a rectangle using my covertices and my vertices. Okay, so I've created a box, which is a line of reference. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two asymptotes. They're going to connect corner to corner on this rectangle that I just drew. So now I'm going to sketch. I'm going to go through the center of the curve and go out the other side. 
and let's add some arrows because those are continuous. Same thing in the other direction. Draw an asymptote. Okay, so I now have my box and my asymptotes drawn. Now I'm only missing one thing, the actual curve. Okay, so now let's go in and we're gonna draw the curve. The curve touches the vertex, so only touches the box in two spots at each of the vertices. But as you come off of that vertex, it approaches each asymptote. So on this side, is touching at the vertex, approaching the asymptote on both sides. So that is how you graph a, a hyperbola using the box method, okay? So now let's talk briefly about the equations of these lines, okay? These two lines cross at the center of the hyperbola which in this case is zero, zero. Okay, the slope is rise over run. Well, my rise is two, right? But because that's what B is, B was two, and my run is A, and A is four. So the slope of the line, B over A, is going to be two over four, which is one half. Now, that's the positive, that's the slope of this, this asymptote. Well, the other one's just a negative slope down to over four. So the slopes of the uh, asymptotes are plus and minus one half. Well, I'm gonna plug that in using my point slope formula and the origin since both asymptotes contain that same point. So it's just gonna be y minus zero is equal to one, positive and negative, one for each asymptote, times x minus zero. Now I'm just emphasizing the zero here to show you we, we plug in the center because that's the common point. But we're gonna simplify that down to just y equals plus or minus one half x. And there are the two equations for the asymptotes, okay? Thank you.